everyone. You are listening to The Redshift, your connection to your piece of the sky. I'm your host, Emma Miller. Hello, hello, hello. How is everyone doing today? I like the name change, CHRNV. Redshift lover. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Hi, Galdwin. Hi, John John. Hello, Stephanie. Hello, Karen. Hi, Eight God. Hi, Tronity. Hi, Rerouted. I hope you all have had a great weekend. I hope you all are having a fantastic day. Oh, Galdwin, <laughs> I like that gif. Your voice is my favorite sound. Well, hanging out with all of you is my favorite part of the week. So very glad to be here. Glad we can uh, enjoy each other's company. Hello. Hi, April. Hi, Kenji. Hi. I hope that you all have had a good week. As I said, I know I have had a fantastic week and I am super, super excited to hop into our astronaut letter for the week. It's kind of hard to call it a letter. I think you all will understand a little bit more uh, once we get into it. Um, With that being said, there isn't much in the way of announcements from the ISA this week, which is wonderful because that means that we can just hop right into uh, what the astronauts sent us. Uh, Though I do want to say that if you haven't noticed, just above us, uh, there's an ISA comms lounge. It's a new channel uh, here. It's a new voice channel that if you want to use, you are welcome to. You're welcome to hang out in it, uh, chat with other shifters, or even just listen to music. There's a, a bot in that channel that will allow you to listen to music. So just kind of a fun thing that was set up for us uh, that we can use. Uh, And who knows, maybe I'll pop by at some point and say hello. We'll see. But uh, a good place for you all to hang out if you want to. Hi, Pumpkin King. Welcome, welcome. This is The Red Shift. Uh, It's our weekly broadcast chatting about uh, what's going on in the colony on Mars. Um, You know, (laughs) the late 2030s, pretty, pretty popping time out here and uh out here well i'm not in space but our astronauts are uh and we're about to uh hop into our astronaut letter so each week if you are joining us and are new each week we get a chance to listen to uh well you get a chance to listen to me share a letter or message that was sent from one of our astronauts uh on mars at the base uh and then we get to play a really cool game, which actually leads me to my next point. So my next point for all of you is that uh, I am super, super, super excited to share the um, to share the message that they've sent with you all, obviously. But I'm also uh, super excited to share the game that you uh, are going to get a chance to experience moving forward, uh, which will be really exciting. <laughs> no rerouted. Definitely not that. Definitely not that. Um, so uh, this this week, like I said, uh, it's kind of a letter. Um, I don't want to give too much away, but I'm super, super excited about it. Our astronaut of the week, uh, Emmy Sarazawa, did something very cool with her uh, with her message for the week. Very, very excited. Um, also, there is an Emmy themed game at the end which you'll also understand (laughs) later. Um, She helped to create it. We kind of worked together to create something that was kind of uh, fun and exciting for us both. So I hope you all enjoy it. Uh, It's going to take a lot of brain power. So we're all going to work together on it. With that being said, we are going to hop right into the astronaut sort of letter. So uh, with that being said, these are, as I've said, Emmy's words, not my own. Uh, and we're going to pop right in. All right. <clears throat> my name is Emmy Sarazawa. I'm a curious person who has studied many things. Astronomy and art history, alchemy and anime. The other astronauts call me the magpie because they say I love shiny things. Well, Last week, Maxim found a very shiny thing, a a Martian fire opal that looked as if it had been deliberately shaped. It is the shiniest thing we have found on Mars, and I can't stop thinking about it. It's just a nice size to fit in your hand, 
It is smooth and round in your palm, but with two shallow planes cut, so where your thumb and forefinger go, it feels like a command surface, like a mouse pad, as if waiting for you to tap or swipe or stroke. I decided my letter must be about the fire opal. I love science fiction, so I went around the crew and said, if this was a synthetic fire opal created as a piece of alien technology, what would it do? Chapter one. John Elvez and Aurora were at the comm center talking to the Mission 4 ship when I found them. There's still almost 40 seconds of lag time between when they say something and when the ship answers back. So while they were waiting for a reply, I told them I needed their help to start my story. John said, it's just a Martian rock. Okay, I said, I can work with that, but I want aliens in this story. Easy, Aurora said. An earthling picked up the rock. Remember, this is Mars. We are the aliens. Genius. This is how the story begins. Once upon a Martian time, an alien landed on the planet and picked up a mysterious gem. Chapter 2 I guess the mic to the ship was open as I was talking to John and Aurora, because a minute later there was a voice from the ship. It was Sasha G., the brilliant inventor and engineer, who said I needed to understand that a shaped opal was exactly what you would use to focus a terahertz radiation field. And another voice chimed in, saying I shouldn't make the mistake of assuming any aliens would be friendly. If there was a way terahertz radiation could be turned into a weapon, that's probably what the opal was for. And Sasha said that terahertz radiation is in the band kind of between microwaves and infrared and you could you probably could make a weapon out of it by designing a way to set up resonating bonds in certain organic molecules the way microwaves heat water and indeed that is exactly what happened you see the martians on the planet had been very careful to stay hidden but then the earthling found one of their opals and they realized they were about to be exposed so they activated the opal, which was a neural emitter weapon. The neural emitter caused all the ATP bonds in the astronaut to hydrolyze, so the earthling slumped to the ground. Then the Martians scurried out of hiding to pick up the body and carry it down into their secret lair. Chapter three. They whisked the astronaut down through a series of caverns to a city 10 kilometers beneath the surface. Down here, the temperature was a constant 20 degrees Celsius, and there was plenty of liquid water trapped in underground lakes. They were far from the reach of the sun, of course, but the halls of the Martian city were full of light. The same terahertz radiation excited bonds in the glowing fungus that lived in the caves, so the very walls and roof glowed with a soft living light. Bertram and Tatiana were quick to understand the possibilities a truly developed terahertz scanner technology could offer. They said the real best use of the fire opal would be as a medical tricorder, like on Star Trek. Doctors do a lot of imaging with x-rays, Bertram said, but x-rays do damage because they pack so much energy. But a terahertz scanner? You could tune to look for specific organic chemicals. That would let you diagnose things like jaundice or maybe diabetes with a wave of your hand. The Martian doctors used their opal scanner and advanced alien science to learn everything they could about how the earthling's body and brain had worked, hoping they could repair what their weapon had broken. Chapter 4 The astronaut woke up in a strange room. It wasn't made of concrete or plastic or stone. The room itself was alive. At least, building out of living tissue was what Patricia and Ida told me would be truly the most amazing thing aliens could do using synthetic opal to focus terahertz radiation. The truth is, the Martians don't build houses or hospitals. They use the fire opal technology to grow them. Deep in the caverns, Mars is full of chemotrophic fungi, giant colonies of them. 
on Earth, their closest analogs would be coral reefs, huge structures, living, that are constantly changing shape as some parts grow and others die away. The Martians use their terahertz technology to control its growth. It could use, or it could cause some parts of the living floor to glow or go dim. Could make windows pull open in the walls and then close again. Could make the room grow bigger the more people entered it and shrink again like a stomach when the visitors had left. Chapter 5 Of course, the astronaut woke up in this strange place with no idea what was going on. The last thing they remembered was picking up the opal. Now they were in this fantastic living city far beneath the surface of the planet with luminous moss for light. The astronaut was not in a bed, but rather pressed into the wall of the room, upright like a toy packed in foam, for the Martian doctors had discovered that earthling bodies were meant to stay with their head up. The astronaut panicked and struggled to get their arms loose from the wall until finally they got them free and could pry their hips and legs loose too. The wall let go with a soft pop and the astronaut stumbled into the center of the room. Their heart raced as they searched frantically for a way out but the room didn't even have a door. The walls and floors were like sponge, firm but not hard. When the astronaut pressed a hand against it, the handprint stayed behind. They watched, wide-eyed, as the spongy wall continued to put forth tiny polyps and fronds, growing before the astronaut's eyes, so that slowly, the handprint became blurred and indistinct, like a track left in the sandy desert, slowly worn away by the wind. Suddenly, there was a low hum. A line appeared down one wall. On each side of the line, the tissue of the living room pulled back, not like a mechanical door pulling apart, but like a ripe fruit splitting open around a seed or a pupil widening to leave a tall oval gap. The wall was responding to a beam of soft light that came from a fire opal, one held in the mandibles of what looked like a giant ant queen. It was a Martian, two Martians in fact, each more than two meters tall, with graceful segmented bodies and along their sides a shimmer that suggested sheathed wings. If I say they looked like queen ants, the emphasis is on the word queen, for they were tall and calm, the way you are when you must guard the lives of thousands of your children. Their speech was complicated. One part was the clicking of mandibles, but there was dance in it, too. Graceful movements of their segmented legs and quick bursts of scent as punctuation. Smells of pepper, forest mold, burning pine needles. Sometimes the sting of ammonia that brought tears to the astronaut's eyes. At first the astronaut crouched in terror against the far wall. But then the first ant queen knelt and bent her head to offer the gift of another fire opal. As the astronaut watched, this stone seemed to gleam and sparkle in time with the sounds and gestures the second Martian made. Finally, the astronaut got up the courage to take the stone. It was warm, and as soon as it touched the skin of the astronaut's hand, it was as if they could hear the Martians more clearly. Now what had been a blur of clicks and dancing movements was translated, somehow, into the murmuring sound of voices, like a conversation getting slowly clearer, as if the speakers were walking down a long passage and entering the room. A sudden memory rose up inside the astronaut, like a bubble, and popped. They could remember coming in after snowboarding in Hokkaido, snow pants still on, running to the table for lunch. 
grabbing a bowl of miso soup and feeling the warmth in their hands and the smell and the good salt taste of it. And the longer the astronaut held the stone, the more they could make out what the Martian queen was saying. Because, Mitty says, that would be the best use of this terahertz radiation, a high-bandwidth multimodal communication device that would allow you to pass on not just words, but also feelings and emotions. So you could enter completely into the mind of the person sending the message. The Martians had used the opal to create a different kind of speech. Instead of one person writing a letter and another reading it, it was as if the recipient could remember having written it. The moment and the feel of the pen in the fingers, the way the room smelled. Not just words, but what you felt and what you wanted to convey. So it was as if the writer and the reader met in a moment in time to share one mind. And the queen said the Martians were so sorry to have killed the earthling with their file opal opal weapon. That had been a terrible accident. But they had taken the earthling's body and studied it as deeply as they could and then grown a new living one to take its place made a new copy of the astronaut from the old materials. Hopefully, they said, it would be as if the astronaut had never died at all, but rather gone to sleep and woken up refreshed. And the queen said, now we will return you to your people, and it will be as if this never happened. And then the queen held up another opal, and a soft humming light came from in it. And darkness dissolved the astronaut like a night tide running over a sandcastle. Chapter 6 The next thing I knew, I was back on the surface, not far from the rocket fuel tanks. I had been surveying the area, looking for a site to put up an atmospheric measurement device so we could have very accurate wind readings from when our spaceships were settling down and lifting off. I looked at my chronometer. Almost four hours had passed since I remembered picking up the fire opal. I was an hour late for a check-in. I knew the rest of the base would be frantic with worry about me. So I set off for home with huge leaping bounds. And when I got back to the base, I found nobody had missed me at all. Ida's rover had gone through the ice and everyone was scrambling to get her out. Of course, I was desperate to tell them about my adventures, but it would have to wait until after the rescue, I thought. Then I realized I had dropped the opal too. I had nothing to prove my story. If I came back with some wild tale about being held by Martians in an underground city, the doctors would write me up as crazy. And if they did believe me, maybe they wouldn't be happy to know that I wasn't the same Emmy who left that morning but a new copy, grown by Martian scientists. Yes, yes, I decided it would be better to keep my mouth shut until I found a better way to tell that story. Then we had the drama of getting Ida, and then we all got sick, and after two weeks, I wasn't sure if I had dreamed the whole adventure. But then, last week, Maxim found the opal translator device the queen had given me right where I dropped it in my frantic race to get back to the base. So I knew it must be true after all. What is the real power of the Martian fire opal? Is it a harmless rock or a Martian death ray? Is it a lens to focus terahertz radiation to do medical scans or grow living beings for the ant queens of Mars? Maybe it's a high bandwidth communications device. Or maybe the real power of the stone, for one that knows how to use it, is to bring friends. My name is Emmy Sarazawa. My scientific specialty is the study of the Martian atmosphere. But together, I bring together and kindle their imaginations so that we can all dream together. Doctors and engineers, scientists and botanists, even earthlings and aliens. So now you know the story of me, astronaut number 12, 
The other earthlings think I am the same old Emi Sarazawa. But now, you know that here on the red planet, I am something more. Part earthling. Part Martian. They call me the magpie, the end. <laughs> what did you all think of Emmy's letter this week? Isn't that something? <laughs> I am. <laughs> very glad that I got to share her letter with you all. Like I said, it wasn't really much of a letter as much as it was a story. <laughs> I'm I'm interested in seeing your reactions. <laughs> what I really love about Emmy and what I think she's trying to get across is in the end, right? It doesn't necessarily matter what the fire opal could have been used for because what it did was it gave everyone on the planet a chance to kind of come together this week uh i really loved hearing uh in that note the the different interactions that each of the astronauts had with emmy and the way that they all had their own way of seeing what the opal could be. Uh, there's something really wonderful about the idea of looking at something and some people some people will look at something and think, well, it's just a fire opal, like a roar or like John. But then there are some people who see the fire opal and can think of a million ways that it could be used uh, outside of just the very simple it being a fire opal which actually is going to play quite a large role into our game today. So I hope you all have your creative thinking hats on as much as Emmy did this week. I love it. <laughs> uh, so get ready for our game this week. We're going to hop into our message from our sponsor and our weather. And then when we get back, I will explain the game. And I will tell you something very special. There's going to be a special prize for the people who win the game. So I hope you're ready. Goldwyn, that's exactly what we need. School of Creativity. Exactly. With that, on to our sponsor message. So you want to be an astronaut. You have the knowledge. You have the training in your discipline. You have the passion. Now you need to take the final step. If you're a bird ready to spring from the nest, the ISA's Flight School is where you can learn to spread your wings and fly. Located in Sydney, Australia, Flight School is the base course that prepares our astronauts for subsequent specialist training in their particular fields. It's not easy. Long hours in the classroom builds knowledge in astrophysics, geology, chemistry, and more. But that's only the beginning. You will plunge into pool work, flight training, and many hours in our detailed simulations of low pressure and microgravity environments. Understand that many walk into the flight school, but only the best will walk out as fully fledged ISA astronauts. Flight school, where teams are born and friendships forged, strong enough to withstand everything the red planet can throw at us. The work done in these first years of training will determine the trajectory of your life and maybe the fate of humankind for years to come. Are you ready to leave the nest? Join your fellow prospective astronauts for the flight of a lifetime at ISA's Flight School. And now the weather. The weather and temperature for this week remains a tad cool with lows of negative 110 degrees Celsius and highs of negative 10 degrees Celsius. Winds are raising slightly varying from 10 meters per second to 25 meters per second, which is equivalent to 35 to 90 kilometers per hour, mainly from the south. 
atmospheric opacity is expected to hover around 0.75. All right, we are back and ready to go. Back and ready to go. Whew, I'm very excited. Uh, mission four is is imminent. It's on its way for sure. Uh, very, very soon. I'm really excited to bring you any information I can about mission four as it comes. So uh, with that being said, we're going to hop into our game for the week. Like I said, I hope you have your creative thinking hats on for the week. Uh, the way that this game is going to work is I am going to share with you all an image. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Um, some things you might recognize, some things you might not recognize necessarily. Uh, if you do recognize it, that's totally okay. I'm just not gonna tell you specifically what it is because what I want you all to do is basically what Emmy had the astronauts on Mars do this week, which is uh, if I show you an image of a pen, I want you to tell me what you could use a pen for that isn't just being a pen. I will be picking two winners each round. There are seven rounds, so there is a total of 14 potential spots for winners, 14. Whoever, so the two winners are going to be um, whoever picks the most practical use. It can't just be, it can't just be like you use a pen as a pen, gotta use it for something else. And the other person is whoever is the silliest, the absolute silliest. Um, so something that is completely just out of left field. And I'm going to decide each round who those two winners are. So who's my most practical and who is the silliest? And I think Stephanie has a, a cool um, gift for you all if you do get a chance to win. So I'll be notating who wins each round. With that being said, are you all ready? Are you excited to go? You excited? You have your brains on? All right, let's start with round one. <laughs> Galton, I like that <laughs> uh, gif, it's very funny. All right, this is our first image. Our first image, round one. I'm looking for the most practical Yes, that's what it is, but I don't just want you to tell me what you could use it for. So don't just say what it could be or what it actually is. I want to know what you would use it for on Mars. Uh, and I will give a, a prize to whoever, um, whoever gives me the silliest answer and whoever, <laughs> um, whoever gives me the most practical. Perfect. We're going to give it, I'm going to give it another minute. Severin has until, yeah, one more minute. <laughs> All right. Get your last minute answers in. All right, this is, all right, this is it. Let's see, let's see. So our first one, you are correct. It is a waffle iron. Let's see, what is our, what are our options? We have people saying waffles, making pancakes. Bright Eyes says a hair crimper, 1980s style. I like that. Kenji said a bear trap. Mmm. Tronity said a sock dryer. Ila said play paddle. Our dad said earlobe flattener. I mean, it is a common occurrence. We do need earlobes to be flattened for sure. Uh, replacement heat shield and repairs. Okay, rin job. I kind of like that. That's a good one. Reform treads on our moon boots. Ooh. Heat press to make t-shirts with ridiculous phrases. John John, okay. Slowed on my dog from eating too fast. We routed. I like what you're thinking. 
Roaming shoe soles. All right. Waiting down a weather. Okay. Okay. All right. I have my answer or I have my winners for this round. So our silliest one is going to be, uh, is going to be, let me see. There were a couple that made me giggle. Hmm. I think we have to go with John John, a heat press to make t-shirts with ridiculous phrases. That would be a very, very silly thing to do while you're on Mars. So I like that a lot. Uh, and then Rockitect, I actually am gonna give you the most practical. I like that a lot. They can be used to reform treads on our moon boots. That's that's important. We need to be able to make sure that we can form the treads on our boots. It's hard to like, hard to sit or uh, to keep our boots treads up. So well done. All right. We're gonna head on to our next one. Our next, uh, our next item is coming up here in just a second. All right, let's do it. Congratulations! So our first round, one more time, is John John and Rockitect are my winners. This is our next option. All right, let's see your answers. Starting now, what else could this be used for? All right, let's see, let's see. Definitely another weapon of opportunity. <laughs> Fear bone. This is good. All right, you guys have about a minute left. Keep on working, keep on working. Let's see, let's see. Oh, you guys are doing really good. All right, you have about 30 seconds left. <laughs> you guys are funny. I like it. Emmy would be very proud of you all right now. All right. 15 seconds left. Ten seconds. <laughs> All right, with that, you are done. All right, we're calling it here. Spear from CHRNV is the last one. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. What do we got? Madalyn says a water collector. Rinjob says dust cover. Flying like Mary Poppins, CHRNV, I like that. Fairbones, definitely another weapon of opportunity. Art at a Martian fishbowl. <laughs> Distillation device. Okay, anti-asteroid cover. Uh, Lack of golf equipment, it could be useful. That's true, that's true. A sword, Tronby, I like where your head's at. Form for water uh, condensate collection, okay. Device that provides 100% hazard immunity. That's funny. <laughs> uh, cover for radiation when the toilets are occupied. Ooh, Illa, I like that. Slow minimum distance descent device. Ooh. Okay, okay. Fending off solar flares from Fearbone. Bright eyes, my karaoke prop for its raining men in the social hub. The dome module of the first Martian water flare. <laughs> Patch materials for Habs and suits. All right, I'm I'm liking where you guys' heads are at, but I think okay, okay, I think here's what we're gonna do. We're going to give. Oh, this is a rough one. This is hard. Okay, okay. For our, for our practical one, I'm going to say Jim Hodlin is going to win our practical one because the idea of it being a slow minimum descent or distant descent device, I think that that's really practical, you know? 
Uh, so we have that one. So that one's going to win there. And I think I have to give Bright Eyes my karaoke prop for its reigning men in the social hub. I, ha- I think I have to do it. That one's very silly. <laughs> and I like that a lot. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Well done. I was <laughs> once jumped off a shed with an umbrella and it didn't slow me down one bit. Well, here's the thing, Fairbone. I wonder if it would slow you down a little bit while you uh, were on Mars. That would be the only thing to think about. All right, let's go into round three. Round three. We still have plenty of time, so if you haven't won yet, don't be discouraged. All right, round three. Your time starts now. You have a minute and a half. Let's see what your guesses or what your ideas would be. What would we use this for? What would we use this for? Trailblazer. (laughs) Collecting water. Oh, I don't know that that would work. All right, all right, let's see. (laughs) You guys are doing a pretty good job. (laughs) All right, all right. Oh, I like, Chanute's, I like where your head's at. I like where your head's at. All right, you guys have about 30 seconds left. Our dad, I think I I appreciate that one a lot. (laughs) You and Fearbone had the same idea, I think. All right, you have 10 seconds left. Five seconds. All right, that is time. Okay, the last one is gonna be uh, cowbell music from Rerouted. All right, so scrolling back up to see, to see, to see. All right, so we have lots of silly ones. I like it. Better than a tinfoil cap. Fairbone, I would agree with that. A radiation plus hat. Okay, I like that. Illa making spaghetti, always important. Kenji said a rock mineral uh, sieve. I, I also like that. (laughs) <laughs> really badly designed regolith strainer. Fair, fair, fair. Uh, watering bowl. Karen, that's an interesting idea. I kind of like that too. kind of does spread out the water, right? Um, Rocket Tech said start Martians for reading your thoughts. <laughs> Old Skip said uh, watermelon grater. Uh, a chair. I like that. I like where your head's at. Space hippie drum circle. <laughs> okay, so... I think I'm going to go ahead and give my silliest uh, to Tronity for this round. Space Hippie Drum drum Circle is, it's perfect. That's exactly what we would use it for. That's fantastic. Um, In terms of our most practical, I am going to give it to Kenji, who suggested that we use it as a rock mineral sieve first. There were quite a lot of people who made that kind of a suggestion, but Kenji did it first. So we're going to go ahead and give it to Kenji. All right, that is the round three. We're on to round four. Ooh, let's go. All right, round flo- round four. You have a minute and a half starting now. What could this be used for? <laughs> you can't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Definitely a weapon of opportunity. All right, Fearbone, I like it. <laughs> I am resisting the urge to do the voice that goes along with that GIF strategic. I am resisting it. <laughs> uh, weapon of choice. All right, when they're walking and fall. Ooh, okay, Jim, I like it. <laughs> keeping the toilets clear for everyone well we do know that that is necessary that's very true about 30 seconds left 
Let's see, let's see. Okay, okay. All right, you have 15 seconds left. 15 seconds. All right, five seconds left. All right, that's time. All right, Soaking Sun Mars Watch is going to be the last one I'm going to look at. So let's see, let's see. Uh, Manja said an antenna. CHRNV said, can't tell you. Uh, that's not how you play the game. You have to tell me. Uh, Jim said, pulling astronauts from tight crevices. Okay, I like that. I'm not sure what maximum meant. Uh, a weapon of opportunity, wham magic, okay. Defending alien attacks. I like that. Jousting matches. Rock attacked. I like where your head's at. Uh, a self-plunging device for constipation. Thunder. That's useful. Uh, John said face sucker. Broccoli said a magic wand. I like that. Also a sword for dual wielding. Nice. Shiny four said walking sticks. Huh. Uh, strategic has that great gift. Weapon of choice. Pulling the cap off a nuke. Uh... A torch, okay, I like where your head's at, April. Repairing the plugged fuel generators. Hood ornament for buggy. Plug for when the Martian gets the runs again. Fair, 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 fair. Plunging out more opals. Rin job, I like where your head's at as well. A barbecue spit. Ooh. That could be a good one, that could be a good one. Playing darts, says Medallin. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and give Medallin playing darts is hilarious and I would love that. That is very, very silly. We're going to use it for playing darts. Just the image of people throwing uh, a toilet plunger is incredible. So I love that a lot. Um, and then I think for our most practical, I'm going to actually give it to Shiny Force for Rover Gear Stick. I feel like a Rover Gear Stick is going to be, um, you know, it's a good, like, alternative thing that we're going to need. Uh, so we'll go ahead and give it give it there. I call being the target. <laughs> God, I like that. I like that. Definitely using it as a plunger. I mean, fair, Jim. Fair. I think you're right. <laughs> All right. We are heading to our next round. This will be round five. Wow, we are flying through this. There is still time to win. There is still time to win. A drumstick for the drum sieve earlier. Ooh, our dad, that was smart. I like that a lot. All right, don't be disheartened. Our next round is starting right now. Or as soon as I press the enter button, you have a minute and a half. What will we use? These four on Mars. <laughs> you all are very funny today. Uh. <laughs> you all have a very similar thought process on this. <laughs> let's see, let's see. All right, you have about 30 seconds left. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. All right, you have 15 seconds left. <laughs> I actually think these are so funny. You guys are doing a great job. I'm so proud of you all. <laughs> all right, that is the end. Beautiful. All right, we're going to end it with, uh, we'll end it with Beacon. We'll end it with Beacon. All right, let me scroll back up. Uh, so we have arm, gloves, earmuffs. Big Boss God, I like where your head's at. Earmuffs, chewing, space earrings, our dad, Big Boss God have the same sort of an idea. Fearbone said, oh yeah, hands down a weapon. 
Temker says a fly killer. Uh, disabling astronauts is rerouted. Uh, for Mars, cockroaches, Kenji. Mm, okay, I like that. Manja says a frisbee. <laughs> I like that a lot. Uh, I like that a lot. Let's keep, all right. Um, shoulder pads, hand gloves, Mars insect killer. Have our heads going on. Uh, use them as a divination rod to find water. Okay, I like that. A door stopper, bum pad for sitting on the rocks for, oh, and comfort. <gasps> oh, interesting, Ardad. I kind of like that. That's smart. Hmm. A door stopper, shiny. I like where your head's at as well. Flotation device in water. Ooh, I do like that a lot. Tool to solve conflicts. <laughs> That's also true. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give money bag my practical. No, wait. Yeah. Uh, my silly, sorry, my silliest one. Because using them as flotation device, vices on a planet without water is hilarious. And I just love the idea of them being uh, flotation devices. Uh, so money bag, let me go ahead and give you that for silliness. And then I'm going to give, uh, I'm going to give our dad our practical award for this one for a bum pad for sitting on the rocks in comfort. That sounds awesome. That would work perfectly. A Mars walkie talkie. <laughs> oh no, we should have used that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, those gifts. Oh no. Testing my spell on Mars. Ooh, Goldwyn. That would have been a good one. That would have been a good one. All right. We have two left. Two left. This is round six. Are you ready? Mars does have water. Mars does have water, but it's frozen. Very frozen. Very cold. It's just too cold. But you know what? It could have water that we don't know about. Like an Emmy story, there could be, you know, an ancient Martian bug civilization living under the surface. We don't know. I mean, the, the astronauts probably do know, but it's fine. <laughs> All right. We're going to round six. We're going to round six. <laughs> these gifts with these sandals are very menacing. Round six, starting now. You have a minute and 30 seconds. What will you use? this for <laughs> I have a feeling we're going to get a lot of frisbee suggestions a lot of them all right let's see <laughs> you guys are really really good at this I'm I am very excited to send this information to Emmy and tell her that her game was so well received. This is fantastic. All right, you have a minute, or not a minute, so sorry, 45 seconds. <laughs> Our dad faking UFOs to the people of Earth. <laughs> Oh my goodness. But of course, it's also it's also a great weapon of opportunity that's true. All right, you have 10 seconds left. All right. That is it. So our last one is going to be buggy hubcaps. All right, let's take a look. Let's see, let's see. Tronity kicks us off with contact lens. Manja says frisbees. Maximo says shield. CHRNV says frisbee. I like it. I like it. Um, Moneybag says protection vest. Jim said an alien astronaut Thanksgiving. I like it. Bouncing act during talent shows. Rocketect. I like where your head's at. Eating, obviously. Trailblazer. I like where your head's at as well. Rerouted said sledding. <laughs> That's funny. I actually. <laughs> hmm. Uh, Mars Transportation, Flying Cardisk, I like it. Reflective Dish, 
also like that fear bone, a painting panel, Mars style charcuterie plate, mm, always useful, lights for the rover, receiving Martian communication, SOS safety device, a white flag of peace, target practice, faking UFOs to the people on Earth. It can be broken and assembled like a puzzle, entertainment on Mars. Huh. You know what? I have to give that my most practical. I I think that that's perfect, rock and roll. That's that's incredibly practical. And if you have a lot of them, you can break them and <laughs> remake them over and over. That's really well done. All right, rock and roll gets my practical suggestion. And now for our silly suggestion. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Anti-stress toy, regolith. You know what? I think I have to give. I think I have to give rerouted the silliest for sledding. I think I have to do that because that's so silly. I love the idea of you with low gravity being able to sled on a, <laughs> a, a like a dinner plate. It's just very funny. All right. So we're going to give rerouted our, our, uh, silliest one there. I like that a lot. It, it, that's true. Goldwyn. It was silly and practical at the same time. Uh, all right. So we are going to give rerouted this. This is going to be our very last, our last one. Y'all, this is our last one. Round seven. <laughs> I will actually give like, I, I will be very proud if anyone actually knows what this, this item is. So, with that, it's round seven, our final round. Let's see how you do. You have a minute and 30 seconds. Go. <laughs> Kenji, thank you for knowing what it actually is. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I'm so proud of you all for knowing what it actually is. That's awesome. All right, let's see, let's see. You have a minute left. <laughs> Well, Jim, you already won one. So you have one. <laughs> All right, let's see. You have 30 seconds left. <laughs> it's a cane that lets old people run. Oh, no. <laughs> A gift for aliens. Okay, I, I like that. All right, 15 seconds left. Three, two, one. All right, our last one is... <laughs> We're going to, the last one will be a rover jack. All right, perfect. Let's scroll back up and let's see what our, our suggestions are. Uh, Janine says a roller skate. Kenji was correct with a facial roller. That's true. Fearbone says it's a weapon. Could be a weapon. Um, Alex, you're correct. It is for beauty. Uh, CHRNV says anti-stress. Also true. Also true. Trailblazer says for balancing things. I like that. Kenji says a Martian microphone. John John says a foot massager. Preparing pizza. Okay. Ill, I like where your head's at. Uh, low gravity cheerleader baton. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's funny. This can also double down as a torture device, the sphere bone. Oh, no. Big Boss says a shake weight. Maximus is a pizza maker. <laughs> CHR and V says cooking equipment. We can check the level of ground with this. That's true, Trailblazer. That's true. That's true. 
Boning up the aliens, roller skates, scare the Martians for baking, laundry iron, radio antenna, looks like a double-sided lollipop, a Martian baby toy, always important, a baking roller, right about it being a weapon, I that's fair, Jim, patching flat tires, a red tooth microphone, okay, a meal hammer to prepare shakes to make even soil for crops, uh, that one phallic looking object that astronauts keep giggling at. John John, like, I like where your head's at. Uh, Janute says, rolling out regolith clay for tiles to guard against radiation. All right. All right. Janute's, I'm going to give the most practical award to you for that one. Rolling out regolith clay for tiles to guard against radiation. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. I feel like that's the most, that is the most practical for sure, for sure. So congratulations. Uh, we're going to give it there. Now it's our silliest one. Our silliest one. Hmm. All right. Our silliest one. I kind of think, honestly, I have to give it to Goldwyn. Low gravity cheerleader baton had me actually giggling. So I think that Goldwyn has to be the winner here. I think it has to be. I just think it has to be. So congratulations. So just to go back through who won today, um, I am so proud of you all. Uh, we have John John, Rockitect, Bright Eyes, Jim Hodlin, Tronity, Kenji, Medallin, Shiny Force, Moneybag, Our Dad, Rerouted, Rock and Row, Goldwyn, and Janutes. I am so, so proud of you all. <laughs> uh, the practical, the practical one was using the face roller to roll out, um, uh, to roll, <laughs> it's just so silly, to roll out regolith clay for tiles against radiation, obviously. So I'm so proud of you all. I am glad that you all had fun. I am sure that Emmy will be very appreciative that you all enjoyed the game as much as you did. Um, with that being said, that concludes our show for the week. Uh, thank you all so much for hanging out. As always, um, you will all uh, be, or if you missed anything of the show or you want to re-listen to um the story that Emmy had written and sent to us. It will be uploaded soon uh, and should have transcripts and whatnot. And with that being said, I bid you all a fond farewell and I will see you all next week for our next episode of The Redshift. Thank you all so much for playing. Bye, everyone. <laughs>